last left off, we know that Earth is trapped now in the Phantom Zone. Somehow Earth was transported to the Phantom Zone and we got all the members of the Justice League reacting very adversely and we got Superman trying to figure out what's going on because he's very concerned because the Phantom Zone, I mean, it's an unknown element. And we've had lots of people in past uh, Superman stories be trans uh, transported into the Phantom Zone before, but never an entire planet. So we're not really sure what the effect of an entire planet being transported into the Phantom Zone would do. But we're getting ahead of ourselves here because what exactly happened? I mean, how did this happen? And, you know, good Lord. Well, let's put it this way. This issue starts off in a rather unorthodox way. We're introduced to Livewire. And we haven't seen Livewire in quite a while. And it, it appears that Livewire, she suddenly, what happens is it, it takes place in Star Labs. And Livewire, uh, there, there's a lot of chaos going on on the planet because uh, when the Earth was transported into the Phantom Zone, uh, somehow it caused a lot of chaos and it led to Livewire escaping. And Livewire right away comes out and she wants to kick some butt and she wants to get revenge and what have you and lo and behold she runs into Superman who's in Star Labs and Superman initially thinks that maybe Livewire had something to do with the planet being transported into the Phantom Zone and and what where Bendis sort of excels here or he's starting to excel is that he's he's trying to establish some characterization and he tries to establish right away Superman tries to almost try to convince Livewire to help you know it basically, Livewire initially tries to attack Superman and it barely phases him and she realizes that, you know, that's kind of a waste of time. And she's sort of taken aback by Superman saying, well, you know, you could try to help. And, uh, and ultimately, I think she's uh, probably ultimately going to try to do that. Meanwhile, other members of the Justice League, something fishy is going on here because, see, in, uh, when people are transported to the Phantom Zone in the past, usually, uh, I remember back in the old days, where if you're transported to the Phantom Zone in comic books, anyone transported to the Phantom Zone, they would they would no longer be sick. So I remember Mono of the Legion of Superheroes, he was dying of lead poisoning. Superboy transported him into the Phantom Zone, and it, it almost like it puts you in a form of stasis. You, you, it's like you don't die. You basically remain immortal. You don't age. You don't anything. And you certainly don't get sick. As a matter of fact, it even prevents you from getting sicker. So if you were dying, Rather than put you in suspended animation, you can transport someone to the Phantom Zone and it, will, it basically halts any deterioration because that's what happened to Mono. Superboy transported Mono into the Phantom Zone and he stayed in the Phantom Zone for a thousand years and then the Legion of Superheroes let him out, cured him of his lead poisoning and Mono became a member of the Legion of Superheroes. That's just an example I'm giving. What's odd about this is that the entire planet Earth is transported into the Phantom Zone by a mistake, apparently the Star Labs made a mistake somehow. It doesn't reveal what Star Labs did, but I guess Star Labs is responsible inadvertently for the planet being transported into the Phantom Zone. And all of a sudden, what's odd about this is it shows Batman hovering over a toilet getting sick, and it's making Batman sick. And it's really odd. There's something apparently about Earth's atmosphere mixing with the, uh, the I guess the... The, the, the makeup of the Phantom Zone that is causing a lot of chaos and it's causing a lot of people on the planet Earth to get really sick, including Batman. Some of the scenes here are a little off. I find it hard to believe. I, you know, it seemed really odd that it showed Batman with his hovering over a toilet, sort of like a cheap fraternity guy on a Sunday morning. You know what I'm saying? That seemed a little off. Again, uh, some of the language, some of the dialogue, again, with Bendis and the members of the Justice League seems a little bit off. But... You know, I'm gonna. The fact is, is that this story is developing. On a more, uh, I think the more exciting aspects of this is Rogelzar. Rogelzar is not responsible. I thought maybe Rogelzar had something to do with the Earth being transported into the Phantom Zone, but clearly Rogelzar as, is as stunned and surprised as anyone that an entire planet that somehow the Earth was transported into the zone. But he wants to take immediate advantage of it. And Bendis does a really good job of portraying Rogelzar as someone who is a very fast-thinking tactician and strategist because Rogelzar immediately goes to work trying to recruit uh, all other members, as many people, other inhabitants of the Phantom Zone, to create an army to attack the Earth. And who does he run into? Rogelzar runs into Jazur. Now Jazur in Kryptonian mythology uh, is considered one of the greatest Kryptonian villains or was actually one of the greatest villains on Krypton before it exploded. And um, 
he basically was responsible for the destruction of one of one of Krypton's moons because he kept doing experiments against the Science Council or what have you. And in any event, Jazir is considered probably one of the one of the greatest criminals on Krypton. And Jazir, of course, uh, rather than kill Jazir, uh, Rogelzar uh, decides to let Jazir live and basically convinces Jazir, look, help me, let's attack this Earth. It's in the Phantom Zone. We can have you. You can have your revenge. I can have my revenge. We could kill the Kryptonian Superman, and you know we could we could use this to our advantage, and undoubtedly try to find some way to get out of the zone because chances are there might be a Phantom Zone projector on the planet Earth because that's usually where most of them are located, or at least one, and or at least get let's get to the bottom of this. Let's attack the Earth. Meanwhile, Superman, of course, he knows this is happening, and he can see him coming, and well, that's basically how the issue ends. You know that there's a big buildup now. The art here, uh, the art by uh, Ivan Reese. Ivan Reese does a really good job here. Uh, drawing uh, uh, live wire is really good. Uh, the way that he draws the atmosphere and the background of the, of the Earth, the the, uh, the details, the detail in the art is really good. I particularly like the uh, interaction, the scenes of interaction between Rogozar and Jazir. You can see these two extremely confident, narcissistic, villainous people sort of feeling each other out tactically sort of you know trying to get a read of each other and it's very very obvious and um, that um, that Jezer is a badass and so is Rogozar and um, uh, Rogozar reminds Jezer that you know you've been here a long time so let's do something about it and um, uh, and it's Rogozar that points out to Jazir that, you know, take a look over your head. There's a planet that's in the zone here. I mean, this has got to be out of the ordinary. Let's take advantage of it. And Rogozar initially is attacked by Jazir's men. And, of course, Rogozar easily defeats them. But instead of killing them, he wants to recruit them because he knows that he wants to take advantage of the fact that, uh, you know, let's, you know, let's let's all work together to get out of here and, you know, maybe kill a Kryptonian and, and, and exterminate a planet while we're at it that is affected by... A Kryptonian. Uh, now, of course, Jazir doesn't realize that if Rogozar hates Superman because Superman's a Kryptonian, you know that Rogozar ultimately is going to turn and kill Jazir anyway because Jazir is also Kryptonian. But Jazir doesn't know that yet, and so it's it's going to be very very interesting when when, when Jazir discovers that Rogozar has some role to play in the destruction of Krypton, as has been hinted at. You know, Jazir at some point is probably going to turn Rogozar, or perhaps uh, Jazir. Jezer is not going to be long for this world. It's going to be hard to uh, it's hard to predict what's going to happen next. But overall, I really like the narrative where this is building. This is this is a slow build of a narrative. The art is really good in conjunction with Supergirl and Superman. Bendis is really building a story here. He's still hit and miss on the dialogue, but you know the plot's good enough that I'm really buying into this. And you know, again, uh, I think this is worth the wait. And I know it's a little. It's kind of controversial. A lot of people, I, I know some of my uh, friends at the comic shop disagree with me. Guys, let me know what you think. What do you think of Superman? How do you think Bendis is doing? Is it too slow paced for you? How's it working out for you? What do you think of the story? Let me know in the comments below. Subscribe to me on Twitter at Metropolis40 Comic Boom. Hit the subscribe button. Until next time, Comic Boom, out.